Do you crave more harmony and balance within yourself and within your home? Using this five-step feng shui plan will help you create a harmonious home that you absolutely love and that supports you feeling in balance. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so that you'll be notified when I post a new feng shui video every single week. And be sure to hit the like button so that this information will be shared with more people in the algorithm. You know, feng shui is often a tool that is used for discovering ways to enhance the quality of your life and your home, including your finances, relationships, health, and personal energy. And I can absolutely relate to all of this. You know, for the past 20 years, I've been a feng shui expert and I've been on a quest to bring more harmony and balance into my own life and balance my own personal energy naturally and holistically. And of course, to create a home that I absolutely love and that feels good. So from 20 years of experience, these are the five most impactful feng shui principles that I've learned. Step number one is to subtract. When I feel out of balance and anxious, I've come to realize that it's typically because I am stuck in an old energetic pattern and my beautiful inner being is trying to get me to move forward, but I'm still hanging on to, I'm not even sure what, some kind of old energy that once served me. So the first step is to subtract. So if there's one thing that I've learned from feng shui over the 20 years is that everything is energy, the walls of your house, your belongings, even your thoughts and your feelings and everything going on in your subconscious. It's all energy and vibration. So the first step is to look around within your home and yourself to see what is standing in the way of you becoming this new energetic pattern of who you wish to become and creating space for the new. Have you ever heard of the term nature abhors a vacuum? Well, essentially what you want in your life, you must leave a space for it. And this is where subtraction comes in. So let's break this down into two categories, your home and your workload, because these are the two things that get glommed up the most and prevent us from feeling harmonious. So in your home, when it comes to subtraction, look around and decide if there are items that are no longer relevant to your life and items that are telling an old story or that may be standing in the way of your new bright story. So take a look at your furniture. So for instance, I remember purchasing an old table years ago. The look of the table was called distressed. Are you familiar with it? It looks old to begin with and then it's purposely made to look worn out. You know, at the time I was already worn out on the inside and experiencing anxiety. I didn't need a worn out table in my home to confirm this feeling of distress. So I let it go. Do you have any furniture in your home that, that creates that distressed feeling, whether it's on purpose or maybe it's just an old piece? Notice how it makes you feel and let me know in the comments. And then in terms of subtracting from your home, always look at your artwork and photos. These tell the story of your life and you should absolutely keep the ones that you love. However, if there are one or two that make you feel stuck in the past, allow yourself the permission to put them into storage and find new artwork and photos that really make you happy and bring new energy. So for instance, maybe there is like one photo where everyone in the, in the picture is smiling, but perhaps something actually happened during that day or that event that wasn't so great. And by the way, we all have these little events, it's okay. But when you look at the photo, maybe subconsciously you're remembering what was uncomfortable. So that's just an opportunity to subtract something that you can replace with something that feels so much better. Some of my other favorite things to let go of are journals. Yes, the journals. You know, I love to write things down and recap my life as there are some things that are sentimental and relevant. But over the years, I found that some of my journals really kind of resembled like books of complaints or past experiences that really kind of mirrored an old version of myself. And so I let them go. And at first it felt weird to let them go because the journals felt kind of sentimental. But then I realized that I was simply just shedding my old skin, a skin that was finished, it was dead, it was not coming back, and so I let it go. And it was so liberating to throw them away and really open up that space for the new. When it comes to your workload, I found that the easiest way to subtract something is to do a brain dump of all the things that you need to do, then have a real life chat with yourself uh, to cross off what isn't necessary. Then you can focus on the priorities. It's amazing how we spend so much time doing things that really don't move the needle in our life. So we need to get to what matters the most and keep the main thing the main thing. The biggest goal is to subtract the things from your schedule and leave space for the restorative activities like time to yourself, family, exercise, restorative yoga, time in nature, you know, whatever brings you back to center. You get to these things by subtracting the second tier stuff. 
I know this attraction thing sounds simple and you probably have heard about it before, but I'm mentioning it because oftentimes we think we need to make these really big drastic changes to bring more harmony into our life. But I've truly found that the more I subtracted and the less I did, the easier my life became and the more time I had for what really mattered. So start subtracting even a few things, a couple of things from your space, from your workload, and then let me know at the comments if you feel more peaceful and relaxed and if you have more space and energy to breathe because that space to breathe is actually the feeling of inner harmony. And then step number two is to work with the bog, which is the feng shui map. You know, I'm such a fan of the Bagua. It's truly changed my life from the inside out. The Bagua has become a dear friend to me, and I hope it can become one to you too. It's so simple and it reflects the natural flow of life. The key is to work with the Bagua to set very clear intentions and watch your life unfold. Sometimes the Bagua will help manifest a big expansive change. Other times it may help to open up the next step you need to take in your life. The Bagua map is a lifetime study. I'm still learning new things even 20 years later. The thing is that it's a guide. So if you're interested in learning more about the Bagua, be sure to check out my recent video here that explains all about it. So the nine quadrants of the Bagua provide a very clear direction for your life goals. You know, prior to working with the Bagua, I had very long to-do lists and a long list of life goals. Both felt very overwhelming and very unharmonious. So once I started implementing feng shui and working with the Bagua in my life, it narrowed down to nine selections. It was such a relief. Again, subtraction. When I was able to zero in on just a few intentions, I actually saw my goals from being buried in a long list to actually manifesting. And at first I tried to feng shui my whole house and all the areas of the Bagua all at once, and I quickly realized that this undertaking was simply impossible. So I learned early on just to focus on a few key intentions at one time. Again, simplicity is the key. The other cool thing about the Bagua is that it can help you with designing and decorating your home. You know, I'm the first to tell you that I absolutely love feng shui, but in no way am I an interior designer. I use the Bagua to help me with all, and I seriously mean all of my design decisions. It can help you determine which colors to put where based on the five elements, where to place artwork based on the areas of the Bagua and your intentions, and it tells you where to place things to up-level the energy in your home and more. The Bagua has helped me feel like I become an instant interior designer because I now have a roadmap for where to place my things, how to determine my color selections, and where to place my furniture. It really takes the guesswork out of the whole design process, and it works. I've used it in my home for years, and many of my clients have created beautiful designed homes that have that special feeling. You know, where people walk in and they say, wow, this feels so good, what have you done? I've had so many clients over the years remark on how special their homes feel after incorporating the Bagua and the five elements into their design plans. There's so much there. So if this information is resonating with you in this video, be sure to give it a like so that this information can be shared with more people in the algorithm. And step number three is to work with the five elements. So in feng shui, we work with the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And these elements are all found in nature. And incorporating the five elements into your home design is a simple and natural approach to creating harmony and balance within yourself and within your home. Feng Shui also teaches how the elements can support you living a healthy lifestyle. What I share with my clients and what I practice in my own home is that a balanced environment includes all five elements. When a space or an aspect of our life feels out of balance, it's typically because one or more of the elements are either deficient or excessive. So to ensure that the rooms in your home actually feel comfortable and soothing and harmonious, simply include all five elements. So for the wood element, you could include the colors of greens and blues, plants, wood furniture and frames, and cotton materials. The fire element can be brought in with the color of reds, orange, yellow, good lighting, and photos and artwork of humans, animals, and items that bring the energy up, like an up lamp. The earth element can be brought in with warm browns and yellows and anything made from the earth, such as pottery, earthenware, and soft and comforting materials like blankets and special mementos. The the metal element could be brought in with items made of silver, bronze, gold, aluminum, rocks, and anything that brings structure and organization to the space. The water element can be brought in with the colors of black or very dark colors or artwork that shows the water elements, such as rivers, beaches, waterfalls, or even a water fountain. 
With all five elements present, the space will immediately come into balance on its own, which is very relaxing and soothing to your nervous system. We can also see the elements as a way to help support a healthy lifestyle. So ensure that your life includes activities from all five elements, creates harmony and balance within yourself. So wood is about planning and taking action to ensure that you're on the right track. Fire is about exercise and social activity. Earth is about self-care and comfort. Metal is about staying focused and having organization and streamlining your home and routine. And water is about creating new beginnings and opening up to new things in your life. And the five elements empower you to know what you need when you're feeling out of balance and how to bring yourself back to center. And then step number four is mindset. So this may not sound like a feng shui thing, but just as you set intentions in your home, you can also up-level your mindset for who you want to become. Oftentimes the person you are today needs to expand into a new version and identity of yourself and grow and improve your life. So here's a simple exercise. Take a sheet of paper and on the left, make a list of your goals. And then on the right, write the attributes and the characteristics of the person that you need to become to reach to attain these goals. Decide what success looks like for you and how you want to feel and act. And I know this sounds simple, but it's actually super powerful. As you step into this new identity of yourself, your life opens up in new ways and it will lead you to the inspired action that you need to take to get there. Through this becoming, you'll feel aligned and harmonious within yourself, and this energy will radiate into your home and bring a lot of harmony and balance into this space as well. Step number five is meditation. So feng shui means wind water. Wind represents your thoughts, your mind, your subconscious, and your emotions, and then the water represents your, your physical environment. So one of the most effective ways to create harmony within yourself is with meditation. Taking time each day to settle into your center, your heart, and your soul and listen is by far one of the most beneficial ways to create harmony in your life. Stilling your mind allows you to access the deeper, calmer, more peaceful parts of yourself. As you learn to meditate, you'll find that you can access this part of yourself anytime and anywhere. So even if there's chaos going on around you, you'll always have access to this source no matter what. Meditation strengthens this channel of harmony within you and is by far the best way to achieve this. All of the answers are always inside of you. So are you ready to optimize the energy in your home to manifest your life goals and to create more inner harmony within yourself with feng shui? Do you wanna feel empowered within your relationships, career and prosperity and well-being? If so, I'd love to help. Click the application link in the description to schedule a discovery call with me. This call will give us a chance to talk and we'll see if, if it's a good fit to work together in the Harmony Blueprint program. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more feng shui videos like this. If you have questions about your home, leave me a question below. I'd love to hear from you. And for now, I'm going to leave you with this next video here to continue helping you to create more inner harmony and an optimized home with feng shui. See you in the next video.